All right, welcome to the Hidden Gems Basketball Podcast, the place that leaves you with a gym after every episode. And we have a very special guest. I mean, honestly, this is, I feel like this is the, the book of first week because this is our first agent on the podcast. But I think it's really special, you know, for the both of us because, you know, I watched Troy play. He don't even know, he probably doesn't even know this, but I watched Troy play when he was at Citrus in junior college. And what's crazy is, is what you're going to see with, you know, the, these type of episodes is how crazy and how small the world is. So Troy actually played at Citrus College, who played with Curtis Eatman, who was my big homie. And That's Curtis Eatman ended up playing for Ray's dad at Detroit Mercy. Yeah, so how crazy. crazy is that? Like, when you start oh, wow. thinking about, like, how like small the world is, bro, like the world I is small. Here. Yep, I'm gonna drop the bomb on that too. But that that that's a that's a common thread with you know stuff that I see. But I think the biggest thing you know that really sticks out with me, Troy, like since we started, you know, Swish Cultures, you know, even with with you and your background, a lot of people say, oh yeah, that's James Harden's homie, right? And like with me, you know, I know that there's so much more to you because not only did you hoop, but you know, seeing you at the games, I work with Lakers and Clippers, and a lot of times I'm seeing you courtside. James Harden ain't nowhere to be found, so I'm gonna drop the bomb right there. <laughs> James Harden ain't nowhere to be found, so if someone's seeing courtside at a Lakers game, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, yeah, they're doing yeah. a little bit more. They're doing more with their network, so you know, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. And you know, you have a long journey. I think is is very important for people to to see the journey because a lot of times in this new high school world, we always see. A lot of people talk about the homies trying to come up and do certain things, but you have a lot more, much more to you of what you've done and accomplished in your career. And I think it's imperative that we talk about that. No, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm at, I, I was at a lot of liquor games and Clipper games. Um, <laughs> I'm not in LA so much now, but you know, when I need to be there, you know, there's ways for me to get there and, and I have a lot of relationships in the building. So. Yep. And, and just explain, you know, just, you know, from the start, just your journey, your basketball journey. Um, you played in college, and and you you know you can give a little bit more, but just tell yeah, a little bit so about your background. Yeah, so just grew up in uh, I grew up in a tough neighborhood, um, Baldwin Hills. People call it the jungles. Um, I grew up in that in that neighborhood, so um, <clears throat> just started you know middle school, Audubon, high school, Dorsey, ended up going to uh, community college in uh, Citrus, uh, which is in Glendale. Uh, I'm sorry, Glendora. Um, and and uh, I played well there, you know, and I ended up getting a scholarship to Santa Clara. Uh, played at Santa Clara for a couple of years. Um, finished with, you know, defensive player of the year. I think we won a CIT that year. Um, playing under coach Kerry Keating. Um, and then I ended up just, uh, you know, trying to figure it out. You know, the summer was a grind. There was a lockout that year. Uh, I never got a chance to, to, to do summer league. So, you know, I, I got in the NBA G League, ended up getting drafted. I was the last pick, number 60. Uh, I was ha happy as hell. You know, I had opportunity. I'm like, I'm on a Lakers G League team. Cool. I'm at home. I'm thinking I'm about to be at the Staples Center. And, uh, you know, we going through training camp and, and um, you know, lockout ends. And, you know, they I start hearing names like Jamal Tinsley's coming and Mario, uh, Jamario Moon and Gerald Green. And, you know, next, you know, Eric Musselman pulled me to the side and was like, hey, appreciate your service, man. It's your last day. You know, so I was. I was hit with a real like life moment where I had to figure it out. And, uh, you know, thankful that I made great relationships, um, you know, while I was in college and played the right way. Um, you know, Randy Bennett, the St. Mary's coach, along with uh, Rick Croy, kind of pushed me for a position with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, and I had no job. So I just told my agent, you know, my agent told me like, hey, I don't know if I'm going to get you a job. You didn't score a lot of points in college. So I don't know what I'm going to get for you. So I just say, you know, I'm going to bet on me. and I'm going to take this job and just just go for it, you know. And I ended up going to Cleveland uh, as a video intern. And I did a little play development when I was there. So I'll let, I'll, I'll let Ray <laughs> ask you about the player development. But why, you know, you see a lot a lot of this, especially when we got a lot of basketball homies. Why did you yep. just stop? A lot of the homies would have been like, hey, man, I'm switching agents. <laughs> Yo, I'm still playing, like pursuing my dream. What made you just say, you know what? I'm going to stop so early. What made you do that? And I had a tough, tough upbringing. So my mom passed when I was five. Oh, wow. And um, I ended up going to foster care. My dad, you know, a lot of parents back in the 80s were, 
you know, strung out on drugs and stuff like that. I don't know what the situation was at the time. My father couldn't provide for me. So my brother and I were, were in, uh, we got sent to foster care, you mm -hmm. know, when I was five years old. Um, and I'm appreciative as hell for my foster mom, uh, Gwen Douglas. And she, you know, she put me in basketball and I always tell her to the day, like, thank you for putting me in camp. Cause you know, that was my first time really like, you know, going to camp, hanging out with kids. And like, this is something I actually like, you know? So I, I kind of grew, it kind of grew on me. Um, but, you know, my life has been tough. You know, it wasn't an easy upbringing, you know, grew up in a, a lower income uh, housing, just growing up in the jungles. Um, and I didn't have a lot, you know, so basketball was my way out. Um, and I just kind of took things in strides, you know, so like, you know, I was in, went, through, went, went through school and then, you know, made friends and here and there. And it's just like the opportunity came. I didn't have a lot um, after I graduated school. You know, I, they weren't throwing jobs out like that. I still kind of want to play ball. I have friends that play ball and, and, you know, they, you know, you see their lifestyle and you see the things that they have and they get to travel and stuff like that. I, I wanted that too, you know? And I just say, you know what, let me just shoot this shot. You know, I'm gonna go to Cleveland for a little bit. I'm just gonna stay in shape, work out. You never, you never know what's gonna happen. You know, I'm still young. I think I was 22 at the time and they offered me a job. You know, I, I, I took a Skype call. I couldn't think, I couldn't see anybody on the screen. I put a button up shirt on, had some shorts on. You know, 45 minutes later, you know, we, we got the call and I got a call from the cabs a couple of days later, like, hey, you ready to leave? You know, two days later, I, they shipped my car and put me in an apartment or in a hotel for a month. And, you know, and I was there for the next 10 months, you know, working my ass off. So I just kind of take opportunities as they come. Um, and that's just how I've been all my life. You know, I'm not scared of opportunity. I'm not scared of the moment. And if it presents itself the, in the door opens, I'm going to step through it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a crazy switch. Like being 22, just getting out of college, you in the G, right? You think you're going to, you know, be playing with the Lakers in a couple months. I'm looking at 10 days. I'm like, 25, you know I mean? counting my chips. Yeah, and then it's like your life takes a whole turn. And then now you're getting thrown into a whole different ro a role before you working in the front office side, basketball side with the team. Mm-hmm. When you made that jump, obviously, you know, you're appreciative of the opportunity. Like you said, you you needed it at the time. But yep. going there, you're still a hooper. Like, are you thinking like I'm thinking I might get a chance. Right. So <laughs> and it's not and it's Jay, it's not like he's pulling up to go play for the can charge in the G in the D League at the time. <laughs> like you're going to work in the front office, you're going to go work for the team. So, like in your mind, you still think you're gonna get a chance. So, how was that once you get to Cleveland? And now it's like you're in a, I wouldn't necessarily say corporate world, but it's more of a business world than just. It's crazy because I didn't know how to like, I didn't know how to fit in. Yeah. And and what I mean by that is like, so there was a, uh, one of my friends, Mike Thompson, Clay Thompson's brother, he played at uh -huh. Pepperdine. He was killing in the G League. Um, so that whole time I was, I got cut and I was working my way, my transition into um, Cleveland. He was five games, 20 a game. Right. So he got a he got an opportunity to get an exhibit 10 when the lockout ended. Right. And um, you know, I've been in the hotel, he's in the hotel. I'm driving him to practice every day. And I'm just like, man, I just got defense player of the year. Same conference, you know. And I know Mike, you know, Mike's good. He can shoot six, seven, he's athletic. And that's when I started learning that it's a business, you know, and they just kind of, you know, take what they need at the time. Mm -hmm. And Mike came into camp with confidence. And uh, he won that spot, you know, so, you know, kudos to Mike, but I was taking him to practice every day and picking him up and hanging out with him the whole time and working out. I'm just like, felt like I was one of the guys, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't know what to expect, you know? So I was literally learning on the fly, trying to balance it. Never done video work before, you know, player development is easy. That's just basketball, you know, rebounding. Um, I mean, there were some things I learned from like Chris Grant in terms of like, just, you know, proper etiquette and, you know, giving great energy on the court and having, you know, the proper, um, speaking to the guys the right way and, and showing up early and leaving late, you know, it's, it's, it's still the same system. Yeah. Uh, I was just at the bottom of the food chain, you know, and, you know, he, he gave me a lot of nuggets around the way on how to like court, you know, how to handle myself in these situations. Um, but I had to figure it out, you know, and I was still working out every day. Like I was there 20 hours a day, literally like 20 hours a day. I was sleep at the, I was sleep at the, at the practice facility sometimes. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Ray, go ahead. You can keep going, bro. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I mean, well, I would just say, you know, once you now you're in the in the league at this point, really. So yeah. just name some of the like what year was this? What were some of the players who was coaching? Like some of the oh, relations? Uh so the coaches were Byron Scott. Um that was Kyrie's rookie year, Tristan's rookie year. Um, 
Alonzo G, Alon- uh, Antoine Jameson, Anthony Parker, like, yeah, Alonzo G was my guy. You know, I rock with him heavy. We was, we was getting it in every day. Like Lou Heron Gody, Armory Caspi was cool. I still talk with him now. Christian Ienga, uh, Samardo Samuels, coaches, right. and it's some of the coaches that's still in the league now. Um, that I still you know connect with on a day to day. Like uh, Jamal Mosley, who's a, who's a head coach in Orlando, or Nate Tibbs is one of his assistants. Um, you know Byron Scott, I see him every now and then, stuff like that. So it's 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 been good, man. Like. A lot of those relationships I still have today, Ramon Sessions, I think he's an agent now, so I see him sometimes. Yep. Um, it was just crazy, though, just seeing, like, you know, even, like, Kyrie was a pick. You know, I was number one. I'm on a team with the number one pick. Yeah. You know, and I'm in practice, just watching practice every day. It was just crazy. Like, just even Kyrie now to see where he's at and, just, and how much he's gotten better in his talent. But that kid is the same kid 10 years ago, you know, yeah. 12 years ago. He was going crazy in practice. Yeah, so you probably seen some stuff that, he was going crazy in practice every day, you know? And I'm like, this dude is just killing these dudes, you know? And it's just like guys like that, it's like a generational talent, you know? So it was it was good to see. I just thought it was normal. I'm like, this is NBA, okay. okay. I see this level. It's pretty good, you know? And, and Kyrie came in at 18, 19 years old, and he was just he was just really good, you know? And, and you could see his talent, the way he finished the ball. He shot the ball good. And and um, his paralysis on the court was just incredible. When was the moment when you were like, yo, Kyrie's a little bit different than the rest? <laughs> you know, like, uh, there's definitely a moment that you think that you could think of. Where and I wish like, I could get the practices. I wish I get the films from back back then. <laughs> just, he's just, they, we only won like 16, 18, maybe 19 games that year. But in practice, nobody can guard him. Literally no one. No one could check him. They, everyone knew what it was. They're like, hey, this kid's good. You know, he just kind of just, and I would tell him, like, man, just go for 40. Like, you know, he's he's trying to figure it out, too. He's a rookie. You know, he don't know nothing. He played eight games in college. He ain't played basketball literally in about two years, and he gets on his team. He got, you know, Antoine Jameson on the team, and Anderson Berjow, and, you know, Ramon Session, and Anthony Parker. Like, these guys have been in the league for, for, for a decade, over a decade now. And, you know, he's just trying to find ways to get them the ball and, and, and fit in, you know. And it's, it's a hard role, especially when your team is losing. LeBron had just left. The city is down. Um, and he's just trying to give them something to cheer about and, 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 and be proud. So he was trying to figure it out. I think a lot, um, you know, and I didn't stay with Cleveland after that year. So I didn't, I don't know what, like, you know, his mentor was, but you know, when I was there, I was like, man, go, you know, go, go get a bucket. Like you, you can get 30 a game easy. I know that, you know, and he's like, man, I gotta, you know, I gotta move the ball around. I gotta run the team and stuff like that. So he was literally trying to figure it out, um, that year, you know, so. He figured it out quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because we we hung out a lot. So, like, we would hang out. You know, he would, we would go out and stuff like that sometimes. Um, and he'll be he'll beat me to the gym. You know, I don't know how, but he would beat me to the gym. And he'll be there before everybody. I'm just like, this dude is different. You know, so that's when I was like, okay. Okay, I see what's going on. You know, this this he really wants it. This kid is really good, and he's showing up. You know, and I think, you know, people that go to college, you get that kind of pedigree. Because a lot of times in college, it's 18, you know, 19, 20-year-olds. You know, we go out at night and we get up in the morning at 6 a.m. go to practice. So it was no different for him. Uh, he would, you know, stay up late uh, some nights and, um, you know, have a good time and still get up in the morning and go to work. You know, and that's when I noticed I was – that's when I learned I was like, okay, this is a job. And that's when it starts becoming a business more than basketball. You know, I started learning that, that aspect of it. And, and I've seen it now over the last 10, 12 years working in the NBA with guys. That, that's just part of it. You got to build a, you know, if you're going to go out, you got to get up and, and do your job the next day. You know, some guys can do it and some guys can. He, Kyrie was definitely one of the ones that could. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and before we move on, to, you know, from Cleveland, um, it's just kind of crazy. Like, now you're talking about how your relationship is growing. You never know who is going to turn into what, like, never later know, on I'm into so, the business. <laughs> I'm so appreciative that I took that job, man. Like, like it's crazy because, like, Chris Grant, I think he's like, uh, he was, I think he's doing some of the Atlanta Hawks right now. You got, you know, Wes Wilcox, GM. He was a GM at the, he was a GM for the G League at the time. And and then when I got there, he was like, yeah, hey, I know you were 6'6". If you was, if I know you were 6'6", I would have drafted you. I was like, <laughs> that goes to show how much, like, people don't know what they're doing. And not like that, but it, it goes to show, like, you really got to get in front of someone. You got to really 
take a chance on them because like video isn't always it, yep. you know, and I, and I kind of thought about that. Just me going into this agency process now, having clients like the, the player being seen is, is so important. I mean, literally the first day I got there, he's like, oh, you six, six. I didn't know you was six, six. I, I would have drafted you, you know? So it's just like, and I, that could have been an opportunity for me, you know, to have our actual real opportunity in the G league in Canton to play, you know, and I never got that. So, you know, but this is it's crazy. Like Jamal Mosey's head coach, Nate Tiz works under him. Uh, you got guys like um, uh, David Griffin, who's in New Orleans now, Jordy Fernandez. I think he's in Sacramento. He wasn't in Denver. I think he's up for a head coaching job next. Um, it's just crazy how I go there and, I, and, and, and now I'm here and I'm in this agency space. Mike Gansey, he's the GM for the, for the Cavs. Um, David, David Lewin, my roommate, my actual roommate, uh, he's in Boston now. He's from Boston. He's the assistant GM for the Boston Celtics. So like a lot of these relationships now, I'm just like picking and choosing now, you know, to who to hit up. And, and it, it just makes it a lot easier for me and my profession now um, that I actually took that route, that gamble that I didn't know was going to have, you know, any effect on what I'm doing today, you know, but 12 years later, 10, 11 years later, I still have those relationships to uh, to lean on. So I'm just, you know, appreciative of my journey and and uh, taking that job in Cleveland because I could have turned it down. You know, it was $26,000 a year. It wasn't a lot of money. I couldn't really afford anything. I had to have three or four roommates, you know, like I ate at the, I ate at the uh, practice facility. I took food home from the practice facility. You know, <laughs> I didn't buy any groceries. You know, I just lived hey, that it. Food, that know. food at the facility be solid, though. Solid. I'm downplaying that. <laughs> Chef was cooking stuff, man. I'm like, hey. You know, the team was on the road. It was struggles. No, nah, for sure. I'm already knowing. But hey, look though, you weren't gonna take the job. Eleven years later, the relationships you made, the relationships you made, them GMs, coaches, they hitting you up now. You got the players, you got the clients. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying, so it's and all it's, full circle. Yeah, and it's so much easier to like to give a favor to a person who you know who's had some, sure. who's been through it with you. You know, like that was a tough season for us, man. You know, like seven, you know, seventeen wins. It's yeah. tough, and I, and I was grinding, man. Like. Those video room jobs is tough, you know. Like you got to watch. They they used to have us watch five games, the the, the the previous five games before we play a team. We got to scout every game, yeah. You know, and like the NBA that year was about four games a week, and like now it's about three point two. You know, like roughly three games a week. Back then it was four. So if it's four games, that's twenty games I got to watch that week. Yeah, where I'm scouting for a game that we got to play. You know, so it's like. It's a grind. Yeah, sometimes I leave at three in the morning, you know, and I get there at seven, you know. And some days I wouldn't even go in at all. I'll just work from home because I'm just so like tired and, and worn out. But on a minimum, I was spending 17 hours a day. Hey, Jordan don't know. 3 a.m. in that snow. Yeah, because it's like shoveling, okay. shoveling snow off the car. Man, I Every played in Finland. Day. Stop the talk. I've been in snow too, boy. What you mean? Hey, <laughs> no, nah, but I I mean it just it just kind of dope because you know, just even now, like being with, you know, Lakers and Clippers, I see a lot of guys in player development and yeah. then the next year they're gone. And then they just went into a whole different mm -hmm. career. They're like, I'm done with basketball. And then yeah. some people stay in the player development role and don't really move up. Like it's a, it's a grind. Like, yeah. like Jamal Mosley, I knew he was going to get a head job. I'm like, this guy got it. Like he was hungry. He was ambitious. He was loud. He was vocal with the players. They responded to him. And I always like, that's my dog right there. You know what I'm saying? So when yeah. I see him, I'm watching him in the cut. Like I got to get like that. I got to be more vocal. I got to be more attentive. I got to, I got to have that energy and, and kind of give that paralysis. Like that's gotta be me, you know? And if I saw it coming then, and he, he just got a job with three years ago with Orlando or two years Orlando. So you could see it in guys like that. It's the same thing with Kyrie. You know, you saw it. I'm like, okay, yeah, he's going to be one of the ones. This coach. Yeah. He's going to be one of the ones just because I just know his, how hard he works, you know, at his job. So, you know, kudos to him. So how did, all right, so after you, you did the year in Cleveland, where did you end up going? Did you do Adidas right next or like how did, what was your situation and oh, how did May, all that transpire? Yeah. So the season ended around May, April. I think my last day um, was probably like around May, like early May or end of May. You know, we just kind of, I just went my own way. I just like, Hey, you know, Jamal was like, Hey man, if you, if you still got the itch, scratch it. You know, and I'm like, he kept saying that, you know, he was like, you got the itch scratching. And I think the reason why I had the itch was because they would have guys that come in um, and they would have me play against them. And they would like, it'll be a, a one hour. They're like, yo, get ready. You know, you got to work on an hour. I'm like, 
am I am I the talent, you know, <laughs> or am I, you know, the punch bag, you know, or like, do I have a, a, a room for both, you know, so I took it serious, you know, they was bringing guys in, I was like, I'm about to lock them up, I'm about to lock their ass up, I'm about to th- have them think about me for, for 10 days, you know what I'm saying, since they just giving them out, Damn. seriously, it was like, shut down Kyrie, shut down this person, shut down Tristan, shut down that person, and then bring in a couple guys, and they brought in DJ Kennedy, he was, he, DJ Kennedy was nice, but yeah, they brought in DJ Kennedy. I think they had me play against him. They they was like, yeah, go pick him up from Pittsburgh and play against. Him. I'm like, I can't do that. Like, you know. So they was. I think they sent like Mike Gansey, who's there now, the GM to pick him up, whatever. And he brought him back, whatever. And I had to play against him for like an hour. And it was just all the coaches and GMs in the front office and the owners watching me. It's like, t- and I'm just an intern, you know. So that right there was just like it kind of like set my bar, right? So just going through that and and you know Jamal's like, if you got the itch, go scratch it, you know. So. After that season, I ended up uh, signing a job to go play in uh, Australia. Ah, it makes sense. Wait, hold on, yeah. hold up. Before we go to the Australia, <laughs> you're not just about to just say, I locked up Kyrie and think we ain't about to respond to that. What? Oh, I didn't, lock, I didn't lock up Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. You kind of threw that him. out there. You said you had to guard him, you know, like, you know, I was no, like, I was saying, hold on. I was saying DJ. I was saying DJ. Oh, okay, okay. All right, Matt. I was yeah, like, they, yo, sorry. They had me guard like DJ Kennedy, and I would like play with some of the guys that didn't play that much. Um, so I would like hoop, like you know, like Luke Heron Gordy didn't really play that much. Mike Thompson didn't play that much. Yeah, exactly. Some some of the other coaches. So I would play three on three sometimes or two on two. I think it was like Omri Caspi, you know, Caspi played some other guys that played there that didn't really get a lot of playing time. So I would play three on three sometimes, or you know, and and I was doing fine. So I'm like, okay, I think I could play still. Ah, so you went. I, I see. I didn't know you took time off. Yeah, he was off. going fine, Jay. He was getting. He was. He had yeah. His, he sometimes he had his days. Yeah, yeah facts. I had my days. Facts. And he tried I, mean, to I got get... a lot. Of, I got. A, I got a lot better there. I think not from like talent wise, but more athletic. I was going through my legs like I never did that before. I was. I was watching Byron Scott come in there every day. He was doing this little elliptical stairmaster for twenty minutes, and then Bearjaw would come. In. I was like, you know, I'm gonna do it too. So I was literally doing the the, the uh, stairmaster every day for twenty minutes a day versus climbing and. Like three months later, I was going through my legs. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm getting a little more athletic. I think I'm, you know, I, I might be all right. So, you know, I transitioned out and um started just training a little more and uh ended up signing a job to go play in um and uh I actually signed a job in Tasmania, Australia, which is like a second division in Australia. It's called the Seabull. Yep. And all our games but the the good thing about that league was we got to play in like we played in Tasmania, obviously, but we would play like in Melbourne, Sydney. Um, you know, Canberra, Brisbane. Mm-hmm. We had to we get to travel along. So I got to I got to see a lot of Australia. And I was like a, you know, that was a beauty in it. it. Was just traveling and just seeing the world uh for the first time. You know, I was grew up in the jungle, you know. So like, you know, coming from from where I come from, you know, low income housing, foster care, you know, out the mud for real. I'm like, I'm in Australia playing ball. So it was a it was a blessing for me. Yeah. Nah, yeah, and I mean, it's kind of dope that you said that in D2, because I wasn't really familiar with D2 in, in, you know, New Zealand, especially, but they're like, it's it's like the NBL, where they play, you know, amongst each other, because a lot of people don't realize that. So in the NBL, you have the New Zealand Breakers, and then they play against Sydney Kings, Melbourne, yeah, yeah. all so the teams the, that you the, talk about. But the Breakers, about. though, so the Breakers are a part of the Australian NBL. Exactly, yep. I played... I played in, in New Zealand as well. So the following season, I, put, I signed it to a, um, a team in New Zealand, um, which is the it's the NBL. It's a bigger, it's a better division, um, but it's the NBA. It's that's a great jumping board, like springboard to go to another team. It just my experience when I was in New Zealand just wasn't great. So I kind of was just over it, you know, as as a whole. Um, and I just, you know, I went there for about like six, four to six months, and I just it was. I told my agent like, man, this ain't gonna work out. So we. He ended up getting me out of there, and then I start transitioning into my life now in the states. So, and how but did you? Friend. But how are you managing the transit? Because look, I, you see so many people fail, especially like not even fail. I would say like just stop and then just stop basketball together. It's tough to keep a network while you're gone, and yeah. especially while you're playing overseas, and then you're doing Cleveland. Like, how did you manage to keep your network up? Especially a lot of people need to tune into this because. It's a lot of overseas players we see when they done playing, that's it. They don't know what else to do. It's hard, man. So, like, I think the number one thing I could tell guys is, like, 
if you want to be in sports and be around sports and double down on it, you know, like show up at all-star weekends and yep. show up at draft week and show up during summer league. And like mm. summer league is literally like an audition for a job in most cases, because it's a lot of partnership. There's a lot of partners there. And at the same time, like even people who get fired from jobs or like they don't bring them back, they're there to find a job. So it's like, if you want to work in the league, be around basketball, simple. It's funny that you say that because I tell people this all the time. There's a lot of shirt and ties, a lot more shirt and ties that I see at Summer League. I'm going to drop the bomb at that. And the reason why I say that is because in that hallway at Summer League, all the people that have been at Summer League know there's this hallway that you go to go to both gyms. I see people get right stopped there. all the time. And you know how much networking yeah. goes in there? Like you got GMs, players. you got agents, you have players. O overseas uh, talent, China agents. Canadian agents that want to just put their players with you. It's just, it's a real, it's really a, a fest of just a lot of people who are trying to not necessarily get on, but just be a part of something great. You know, even if they could be a small piece of it, you know, they just want to be a part of it and they trying to better their lives, which they should, you know, and, and uh, I never had to do that. Thank God. But, you know, as I've been working um, in this space for about 10 years now, I've learned that that's the most important thing to do is just be available be present when you're at these games, you know, make sure people know who you are, make sure you're walking around. If you're going to go to a basketball game and you want to be, um, and you want to be visible, make sure you get a credential, make sure you get down to the court, make sure you get there two hours early, make sure you say hi to, you know, both teams. If someone's sitting on the court, look at their tag and see what their name is, start a conversation, you know, um, and be vulnerable. You know, it's hard. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't like being vulnerable and that's the biggest thing. It's like vulnerability is real and the most vulnerable person wins. But what if you don't, like I, I, I kind of, I have my own answer to it, but I want to ask both of y'all. What if you don't have that, you know, that, you know, the pass to go down to the floor? I tell people like at summer league, you really don't need the pass to get down to the floor. Honestly, a lot of the networking happens in that middle in hallway. The hallway. <laughs> in the hallway. <laughs> you know, son, like you can make that trip, but there's a way to do it. Like, how do you guys feel like is the way to like make those introductions and make those, you know, those relationships do you got to give someone the whole recipe and the whole like bio or do you just kind of just, you know, first time you see them like quick handshake. Hey, I do this X, Y, Z. What do you guys feel like is the way to make that networking? You want to go, Ray? Let go. Let T go first. <laughs> um, yeah. T, you on the other side of the spectrum now, bro. So you can, you can tell us the, the sauce. So, so now you see the other, other way now, cause you a big dog now. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, obviously doing your homework, you know, before mm. you get there is, is important to just know who people are because some people don't walk around with their tags on, so you wouldn't even know. Mm. Um, and then it's just like, you know, be 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 welcoming, be friendly, give a compliment and start a conversation mm. and, and take it from there, you know, and, and make sure you have the right, um, you know, the conversation shouldn't be too long, two minutes and and keep it moving, you know, and just make sure you follow up when you're on, on your um Make sure you follow with the people you meet with and just show a, a sense of urgency in terms of like you actually caring and wanting to be uh, in relationship with that person because it matters, you know, like people, people meet me all the time and it's like, I give them my contact and they don't reach out, you know, and I forget who they are. You know, they may hit me up a couple months later, but it's just like, be intentional, you know, in what you're doing mm -hmm. while you're there. Mm. Yeah, and then I could say, you know, I was just there, uh, what, a week ago. And just from a player's perspective, like, you know, I ain't been in the league in six years. I've been overseas the last six years of my life. Really, my everything's been in Europe. So ever since I haven't been in the league, I really haven't come around. I haven't really, you know, I, I see people in L.A. I see people around and this, what up, hey, here, there. But when I went out there this time, it was a little bit more different. I was like, you know, I just kind of got to show my face because my years of playing, I only got a couple more years left, right? So if I'm going to transition into something in basketball, it's like I'm forgotten, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they know who I am and stuff, but no one's thinking about Ray McCallum over playing in Italy or playing in France. So for me, it was just more so just be around, just kind of be around, show my face, go up to my old coaches, go up to old teammates. Now I got teammates that are doing TV, teammates that are agents now, teammates that are working for teams or whatever the case might be, mm -hmm. and just kind of network and show my face again, letting people know where I'm at, what I'm doing, and that I would have interest in something in basketball when I'm done and, and just kind of keep that relationship going and, and uh, for me, it was kind of eye-opening. Like, oh, people had a lot of respect for me. I felt like, 
people still remembered me. Like I came out of there feeling more positive than, you know, years before. Like, nah, I'm not really trying to go around those people. Like I ain't in the league, so they ain't gonna really rock with me. But you enjoying I, it right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's dope though. That's what's up, man. Yeah, so it was it was good that I went and did that for sure. But like you said, you just gotta be vulnerable and just it ain't gotta be no long conversation. Just go say what up, show your face, and then you know. Yeah, I, I think even for you, like, I don't know what your plan is when you transition out, but, you know, when you do get ready to transition out, it's like those last two years, you know, you're going to do your, those going to be your last two years. You need to start prepping for it. So it's like, mm. okay, I need to get the summer league and I'm out, I'm out to be here for t- for 12 days. Mm. And every day that week, you're going to be letting people know like, hey, next year's my last year. I want to, I want to roll right into a role, you know, and, and that's, and, and the good thing about you actually going there now and actually seeing that and being able to be uh, cognitive of like what you're actually seeing and doing is you can be intentional yeah you can be intentional and you can start setting up your your post career on whatever to however you want you see these numbers that the coaches are getting now so it's if that's crazy. something that's that's you know important to you or something that you want to get into you can easily flow into that you got a basketball background you played a long time um you played again the right way and you're a good person so it's like you know stuff like this even the, the podcast and stuff like that that you're doing is just great you know it's just gonna help you out so much more so even even right now you may not even see it now but yeah, I can feel it. No, I, I know what you mean. Finish playing, man, and them opportunities come. Just, just make a decision. You know, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know, even before we even get to you know your your relationship with James and stuff, I want to get to Adidas because I feel like it's so unique because you saw the shift of how this high school culture is, and you've yeah. seen it change with the big dogs. I mean. I think you were in the time LaMelo, Zion, like those guys yeah. low-key changed the whole culture of high school and social media. And it's crazy because they from, you know, the IE. Well, yeah. LaMelo is from the IE, but, you know, and Demo, that's that's family. But He went like, to Citrus too. That's what I'm saying, went to Citrus. And that's what I'm saying, like the whole network is crazy, like in terms of, of all that. And just talk about, you know, how you moved on to, how you got the Adidas position and then, what are some things that you learned, especially being in the next gen era, you know, and seeing those guys and things that you had to deal with and then bringing that and leveraging that out into what what you have now? Because I know you did that for a couple of years. Uh, I mean, Adidas was great, man. Like, I, that was a very, very, very great experience. Uh, it's crazy because when I graduated Santa Clara, we were sponsored by Adidas and my coach had a great relationship with one of the, uh, the grassroots people there at the time. And, and, I, and, you know, I was trying to get a job there and like, you know, I didn't know if basketball was going to be for me and overseas and the journey. And, you know, they kept just pushing it out. Mm-hmm. And um, my coaches were pressing me like, man, take the job at Adidas, take the job at Adidas. I'm like, well, the dude ain't call me back, man. And then he would call me back like three months later and like, Hey man, we still working on it. You know? And I'm stressing. And that was probably one of the reasons why I took that job too with, with the cab. Cause I'm like, man, man, dude ain't hit me back, man. So yeah. it's crazy. Back right before I went to Australia, like, hey man, we got the interviews for the job. Dude. I'm like, man, I'm out of here, bro. Like you took too long. <laughs> so like it circled back around yeah. in 2016. So when James signed with Adidas, um, you know, we would we, you know, we would get photographed and we would be wearing Nike still. And and um, you know, Chris River, shout out to Chris River is my OG, it's my dog. You know, still talk to him all the time. Just saw him a couple of days ago. Um, you know, he was just like, man, you can't be wearing Nike, man, if you're going to be around James. And I'm like, well, give me opportunity. You know, y'all wanted me before. What's different now, you know? So I just kind of like, you know, I, I planted my seed. And, and um, you know, eventually he gave, me a, he gave me and one of my other friends an internship. Um, he didn't give it to me, but we ended up getting, a, getting an internship, working in some other category in a, in a, in a company. And I just took it super serious, man. Like I use my same philosophies that we we uh, embed in ourselves from sports to getting up early, leaving late, you know, you know, doing extra credit and being present, you know, just the scholar in us that we, you know, the prize that we have. And I just took that initiative the whole time. You know, I was getting up early seven o'clock in the morning, getting there at 730. My boss would get there around 830, you know, people. And I made an impression on a lot of people. You know, so after like six months, they was ready off. They offered me about, I had like six, six, seven offers inside the company, you know, and, 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 and intentionally I want to work in grassroots, you know, that was, you know, basketball was my thing. They had me working, uh, they had me doing like merch boards and working with the NCAA football. And it was a bunch of stuff I didn't know a lot about, but it was, it was great practice to learn how to like 
you know, work in a corporate space, how to talk to people, how to be present, how to email. Um, you know, this is my first, first real job, like in a corporate space. So, you know, I would get done with my work and I would, cause I would get there so early, I'll be done. I'm like, Hey, you know, you got anything else for me to do? And then they'll be like, no, nah, I just take a couple, you know, I will go downstairs to basketball for like, Hey, I need something to do. I think you know, even before you finish, I think this is very key because I see a lot of, you know, you know, people come in with, you know, with a player and then they do get an internship with agency. I've seen that a lot more, but then mm -hmm. they don't move on and get a bigger position after their internship is done. I've right. been seeing that. That's been more common. Like you kind of explained it, but like, how do you feel like you are, you were different from, from, you know, from everyone else in terms of that internship and what you did to get there and things you did to do that? I mean, I've, I've always been a good person. You know, I think that's just number one. I've yeah. always treated people good. Um, never, I don't have any, any like bad relationships with people. That's just not something I'm a part of. Um, I've always, you know, trust people. I'm a loyal person. Um, I just think that like my consistency um, and my effort that I put in just kind of like gave me opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just what's been pushing me throughout my life, you know, opportunity and being accountable. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I've been doing since day one, since fourth grade, third grade, you know, like that's just been my thing. So, you know, Adidas was nothing different. I was showing up early. I was getting my work done. I was going downstairs on basketball floor intentionally. And I was asking them for if they needed help with anything, you know, and I just kept showing up every day, every day, you know, and eventually it was like, okay, do this, you know, and it just started with little tasks and it kind of became bigger tasks. And then it became a, a whole new role, uh, which was just given given on to me, which was uh, they kind of put me with James. You know, they was like, take James business. You know, you you got it now, you know. And um, and I kind of just I owned it. You know, I killed that shit. You know, 16 months I was doing two jobs. You know, I didn't complain about anything. I didn't ask for a raise. I just put my head down and I locked in. I got it done, you know, um, and, and that and I kind of just, you know, pushed me to where I am today. Um, and I got promotions and promotions and promotions. And, you know, we, they gave me a lot more responsibility as the years went on. And it was, it was dope, man. Like these was dope. You know, we had a lot of fun stuff that we did, um, uh, like the path, you know, leaders up rides and stuff, the gauntlet, you know, we took kids to, to, to Italy. They went to, you know, Aruba and it was super dope, man. It was super cool. Especially doing a lot of the grassroots stuff. I'm not trying to stay on adidas too much but you're not about to just wait 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 we're not, we not about to just downplay like james Harden had one of the top shoes this year number one too yeah so yeah, like yeah, what yeah. you've established and what you had to build is a lot different you get what i'm yeah, saying james, it hit different yeah, james, james is definitely one on one you know i wouldn't say if i'd be lying if i said he was, it was easy to work with a superstar um but i handled that shit good as hell you know enough to where he came to me after I got married and asked me to start taking over his, his, uh, his business off the court, you know, and shout out to James. Cause you know, obviously it took about seven years, eight years for him to come to me with that. I never was, was going to be the person to go and ask him, you know, and he kind of just saw that in me. And sometimes that's just what it takes. You know, it might take seven years, you know, to get that kind of trust from a person like that. And, you know, and I've been basically handling all that stuff, you know, off the court day to day. Um, and you know, now I'm his agent. So, before I hand it off to Ray to, to talk, but I think what's key is, is that you have relationships with a lot of other guys too. Like yeah. Jalen, if he see you, it's like, yo, like what's up? It ain't just James. Usually, and it's new for me too, like being with Swish, like I see people's friends come in and when they're with them, they don't leave their side at all. They like, nah, like have them in the <laughs> Snuggie, have them in the blanket. If they go into McDonald's, they at McDonald's. You get what I'm saying? Right, but right. like, <laughs> you moving a little different. Like, you are making relationships with players, like, you know, doing that type of stuff. And I think it's key for you to really kind of explain and talk about that if you can. I mean, like, a lot of the guys that I worked with in the past, you know, I, the one thing that's good about me is like, I will get on the court with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm six. six. <laughs> Let's Defense go. Player of the year. Let's go. You know, I got to say, I'm, I'm always going to talk that. Like, yeah, I got defense player to you. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's a different level of respect. It's just like someone that's going through the trenches with you. They're going to have a lot more respect for you if, if you do it with them than sit on the sideline, you know? So like, you know, even when, you know, when we took Jalen to the Philippines, that Adidas, you know, I worked out with him every day, you know, on the court, off the court, everything, you know, um, you know, 
even like Harrison Barnes worked out with him, you know? So it's just like Donovan Mitchell, you know, in Spain three or four years ago, you know, it's, it's just, I, I have a connection with God cause I'm a hooper, you know, first. And, but, you know, as my career has changed, I've become more of a business person. So it's just a level of respect, man. I've always been great to people. People ask me to get accountability. People ask me to do things. These guys that connect with me and, and that, that rock with me, um, you know, I'm going to Trey Young's wedding this Saturday, Sunday, you know? So it's like, that's just all from just being solid. You know, I've been solid. Like, I try not to have no bad, nothing, nobody can say nothing bad about me. Yeah, but T, people don't want to leave their guys. That's what I'm seeing. Like, T, how are you managing to make those relationships? Like, people are scared, like, oh, okay, I got James, right? If I go yeah. to Trey Young, then, you know, that might ruin my relationship with James. He might think I'm over here trying to, like, nah, but not like, like that, man. It's, he's it's not organic. like that. But I'm saying, I'm just talking, like, I'm using that as an example more so. I'm saying, like, people now that I see are scared to even talk to someone else. They just go everywhere with them and, like, I just seen what you've managed to do instead of you didn't take that route. You were actually doing your thing and then it got you and built you up to what you are now. It wasn't like you were just every single second you were next to him. You get what I'm saying? That's why yeah, I, no, I get you. I mean, I can do both. I can make sure my client's good and I can go make sure my other client's good mm -hmm. and my other one and my other one and that one and this one and that one. And everybody's going to be good. It's just like my phone rings all the time. My wife's like, yo, these late night phone calls got to stop. I'm like, Okay. You know, I'm the first one, it ring, the first ring, I'm picking it up, you know, in the middle of my sleep. So it's like, I'm just wired different. Um, and I'm appreciative that I'm like that, you know, it's just been my grind for years, man. And like, you know, whenever I retire one day, I'm gonna be appreciative because I'm, I'm probably gonna be bored. I'm gonna have to find something else to do, but <laughs> I'm a busy person, man. I like to stay busy. Um, I treat my guys well, who I work with always. Um, and that's just been my thing, man. Like they call me, I answer. They ask for something, I get it done, you know, it, it, and I'm a push for them all the time, you know, so it's just, that's just who I am. It's yeah. always been who I was, always been who I am, always going to be who I am, so. Right, go ahead, bro. That's, that's why I got those relationships. Then it, And then it's just like, you know, you see him out, you see him here, you see him there. Yeah, everyone's like, man, TP that guy, man. Nah, they don't be like that. Nah, nah, they do, but I mean, what's crazy about you explaining everything is like, I don't know what you majored in college, but. Every person I ever talk to is like super successful in their business, whatever they do. It's like, I don't know if he went to school for this. You you could have probably mapped out this plan. He thought you nah, were gonna move nah. and it just happens, right? Nah, it just happened. It happened organically, man. It just like like I said, going to Cleveland for that year, you know, that was it was a grind, man. 17 hours a day. Yeah. You know, staring at a film for seven of them on a court for five, you know. So it's like you go through different trials and errors in your life and and each each step is an is is just information you're just storing and, and using it later. You know, you never know. So it's just like, you know, I'm cool with Tristan and Kyrie and Alonzo G. I just saw in Vegas and you know, I saw Anthony Parker and these people that I'm cool with, it's just like I've known them for so long and they've probably seen me and seen stuff on on the internet or, you know, follow me on social and kind of like, you know, saw my life and and um and appreciate how I live and you know I'm a super open person I'm very open in my life uh, I'm not super public like that but w what you see is what I am you know so and and I think what Jordan's kind of trying to say yeah so I'm gonna piggyback off for a little bit it's like and hopefully you can give some advice to some of these young players and some of these current guys playing like I think what he's saying is these guys don't leave these players hips so yeah no. like, it's fear yeah, like James is your boy, right? Y'all knowing each other forever, right? So you see a lot of guys coming in. Okay, maybe you don't know James is going to be James Harden as he is today. You didn't know this 13 years ago or whatever the case might be. But like now with these top guys, they want to bring their homies on. Their homies are with them 24-7. The homies want the, – the the top players trying to get the homie a, a job mm -hmm. at the agency or a job at the shoe company. Like you chose a different route where yeah. like you were looking out for yourself and it wasn't like – Okay, James, let me get this. James, let me get that. Like, how can you, t like, what can you say to, like, so for me, so help for these me, players, you know, go your own path? So for me, like, my path was always my path, right? I, I never went to an OKC game in OKC when he was there. Mm. Damn. And he's probably like, yo, T, like, pull up, bro. I, like, I went to a game, again, well, obviously, I've been to games when he played for OKC, but I've never been, I've never been to OKC. I never went to OKC when he was playing there. So I never yeah. got a chance to actually see him play for OKC. 
one because I was in college, two because I took a job as um at in the G League, three I took a I took an internship, four I was gone overseas. Yeah. Right. So I was focused on myself, and I was stupid. Like I should have been like James. Once he took that job to the Rockets, I should be like yo, give me a summer league job. That's what I should have did, and that's what I would tell guys now. Like if you're in a position and you got a guy like James, where the players run the NBA. Ask that player, like, hey, yo, give me a job on the summer league, even if it's two years in a row. Like, I rather I should have done that before I even hung up the, you know, hung it up. Cause it's like I was a prime player for the for what the league is looking for. Someone that's athletic that can defend and, and run the floor really hard and and maybe have some good mechanics, right? And it, although I couldn't shoot the ball great out of college, I, I developed a jump shot as of the time go, as I went overseas. I, you know, I made, I think I made like 75 threes my first year out out. And I didn't shoot none in college at all. So it was like my progression, I had so much room to grow, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I would have took a chance and was like, yo, bro, I need this, bro. I need, I need a summer league job. Like, just get me on the team. I'll be fine. I never did it. I wasn't vulnerable. I didn't know. I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know what it meant to be vulnerable, to put myself out there, to ask. I'm so, I'm so like self oriented and like, I got so much pride to just do things myself. Even to this day, I got to like check myself and just be like, yo, Oh, you know, just ask, you know, because sometimes you just need a little help, you know. Um, but it's just like for me, I focused on me. So like when I graduated school, you know, I focused on me. And that was just my years for the first three or four years was just focus on Troy. Let's figure it out. And then as I transitioned out, you know, I, I did the G League thing. I tried the G League thing again and it didn't work out. And I was just like, you know, I'm done. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go plant the seed because this this person just reached out to me about wearing Nikes and I'm going to try and get a job at Adidas. And then that happened. You know, they offered me a job and, you know, I, I, I transitioned there and, and kind of just made, uh, you know, made my, ba my bed there. And, and I just, you know, I was good for seven years, you know, until another opportunity came. So I think for guys that's just, that have friends, that's, that's, uh, that's superstar talent, you know, you got to learn how to like, if, if you're going to work for them, then like establish it, you know, create a balance um where you're with them sometimes and you're not with them sometimes because if you're always with them then it it creates um separation anxiety mm. um and if they're and if you're not around them then they feel like you know you don't fuck with them like that so it's like you know have your own thing going on at the same time make sure you support them as much as they need some and guys need, my bad my bad keep going my bad. Nah, yeah some guys may need you know full support 24 7 need you all around all the time yeah. and some guys won't some guys don't need that you know so i think it's just a balance of who you're dealing with at the time and what that person is, do they have a do they have a girlfriend? Are they married? Are they trying to get married? Is that something that they're that's important to them? Or is it just like grind all the time? You know, so like the work life balance is real. And I always talk to my guys about like, you know, having that work life balance and trying to find like time for yourselves and and stuff like that. So and then it takes seven years you're working with your one of your best friends. Yeah. He's like, all right, cool. Like now he's comfortable. Like I want you to take care of everything. Solid for seven years, you know. I'm saying, like, calling me at four in the morning in, from Greece, like, yo, I need you to do this. All right, got you. It's three o'clock where he at. It's like 5.30. I'm like, man, what's up? What you need? All right, I got you. Yeah. But you know what you can do, though? You can call on Troy for sure. Yeah. No, no doubt. So, I mean, that's just what it is. And I think, like, even in the agent space, like, this was definitely, like, something I wanted to do. Um, can nobody service anybody better than me in this space? Even if I'm, this is my first year in the agency space, like, uh, like the stuff I've done at Adidas and like the stuff I had to go through in terms of like just servicing guys and being there for, for my, for my clients, can nobody, can nobody fuck with me? Mm. I think that's the real, like. Drop, drop the. Drop oh, yeah, that's, that's the most important thing <laughs> is, is the relationship with your clients and your agent. And like, if you need to call on them for something, they're going to get it done, you know? So like. I know like for Adidas, we, we, we service the hell out of our guys. I service the hell out of my guys. I did 150, 200,000 miles a year, every year. You know, everyone's not doing that. I'm not like there's, I've been to so many games this year and, and um, you know, a lot of times I'm sometimes the only agent there. And, you know, when I was at Adidas, uh, we would travel to a lot of games, you know, and I would go support my guys. I would see, you know, a couple of games a month. People just not showing up like that, man. You know, and I got a great wife, you know, she supports me. Um, and she goes out there and she, she encourages me to go do my job and, and make sure I'm at my best. So she's not, you know, she understands and she gets it. 
and we spend a lot of time together. You know, we take our trips here and there, and, and my work life balance is great. Um, she knows when I when I gotta leave, I gotta leave. You know, and I'm gonna be back in a couple of days, and that's just what it is. But can nobody mess with me from a serv- from a client service perspective, and just making sure like the client is good, and just having that that uh, connection with my guys. Like I I don't see nobody being better than me at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta put the thrill of laugh because hey bro, I would have thought that you don't have James. Like you got this crazy hunger to you. Like that's what's crazy, bro. Like uh, you got a crazy hunger to you. Like it just like it just it, and, and I think it's fire because this is how I see why you succeed in the way you do. Because now that you're in the agency field, I just see a new passion, a new hunger from you. You know, and and I and I've seen that, you know. With, you know, even Antoine Davis, we did some stuff, you know, with him and, yeah. you know, just things that you saw. And that's kind of new. But that's how I knew, like, the basketball background was real for you because it's stuff that you were explaining to me. You know, you didn't come in there just, you know, talking to Antoine Davis in, in a light where people are like, well, that doesn't translate to the NBA. The, mo- the first thing that you told me was just, like, his shooting percentage, like, you know, and different elements to where it translates to the next level. And I mm-hmm. think that you got a unique skill set to you that's a lot different than most. Um, talk about how you did transition to equity basketball. You know, you got Mike Silverman over there, Brandon Greer. You know, oh. that's, that's the Detroit guys over there, over there with uh, Ray. You know, Ray got, he got that Detroit blue on, so that's how you know he got his Detroit ties. But just yeah. talk a little bit about that too, bro. Uh, so I, I know Mike for a long time, man. We've always talked about or like, you know, flirted with the idea of working together. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I was transitioning out, you know, just working on James's business and kind of managing his partners, um, in his day-to-day life, you know, I, I owe him, the, you know, the first due of respect is like, Hey man, I, I, I'm about to, uh, I think I'm about to leave Adidas, man. It's just, I think it's time to go. Um, you know, how do you feel about me, you know, going to agency? Cause you know, guys, agencies are reaching out, you know, and I want to make sure I give everybody like the time of day, um, to make a decision, you know? So he kind of like threw some ideas out there and, um, you know, one of them was, you know, working with Mike and and kind of going through that. And, you know, Mike and James went to Arizona State together, mm-hmm. you know, when James was a freshman. So they had a long history together. Mike has always been someone that's been supportive of James and watched James and always wanted to work with James. And um, Mike's always been somebody that I've always, you know, connected with. Um, I didn't really know Brandon too much, uh, but Brandon is super cool. You know, I got to know him over the last few months, over the last year, actually, but you know, it, it just seemed like the right move. You know, this is something that we all kind of agreed on. Um, you know, I wasn't even trying to rep James, to be honest. Wasn't even trying to do it, you know, and it was something he wanted more, you know, not like that, but, you know, it was something that he wanted, you know, and, I, and you know, when he wanted it, I was like, well, shit, let's go. You know, hell yeah, I want it, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't something I was like, hey, I need you, bro. I need you. I need you. Like, let me, you know, sign with me. Sign with, it wasn't nothing like that. I wanted to be organic. And it was organic, you know, like, you know, I, I do all this business. I manage all his affairs. Uh, you know, if I were to go to some ag- other agency, you know, they were going to make sure like, hey, well, you know, James is on our books too, you know. So, you know, I gave him the autonomy to to uh, help me make the decision. And, uh, you know, equity was 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 the best move. So. Right. Go ahead. You know a little bit more about that. I mean, <laughs> you know, I know the agency joint, but, you know, hey, you tapped in too. Go ahead, Ray. I, I saw yeah, the eyes nah, light up. Shout out to Mike, though, man. That's Detroit Country Day yeah, one. Mike, cool, man. He, he a good dude, yeah. man. He a good nah. dude. You know what he's doing. He, he, he's passionate as hell. This dude will, 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 you know, to get a client, you know, he'll go go to war. So he goes to war for his guy. He's always been a great person. So, Yeah, I mean, for me, more than anything, just what I like is how your journey has been. It's like, like I was just saying before, you just see a lot of the homies ride with the, with, with the big dog, like, yeah. Looking for this and that. Yours is, is unique because it's like more so he's like, hey, I need you. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And you got your stuff going on, but you know, you're sacrificing some of your things to to help. Right, you. right. I think I think what I tell guys, like even right now, right? So I'm in I'm in I live in Phoenix and James is here for the summer. I'm like, just come on for the summer, bro. I work out with you every day. You know, so like I'm gonna get up in the morning tomorrow at 7 a.m. We, you know, he he's been doing two a days um the last three weeks. And like James has a crazy hunger in him right now. Like if he got an MVP this season, I wouldn't be surprised. That's what kind of hunger he got in him right now. Just from the disrespect, um, just, you know, the free agency stuff, which I don't really want to get into, but you know, 7am, two hour, three hour practice, 
work out, come back, you know, the nutrition is, is you know, just even from the, the discipline from dieting, you know, we just came, I just went to his house now. We, you know, we did cardio for an hour. Um, his discipline is crazy right now. We got a photo shoot tomorrow. You know, we're going to get up in the morning and work out at seven to 10 and then, you know, photo shoot from 11 to two. And then he won't, you know, he's going to play ball tomorrow at five. So it's like his discipline right now is, is, is impeccable. I'm happy that he's starting now. You know, we got a, you know, we got a whole month of August, whole month of September to get this thing going and, and, and get him in the best shape um, of his, of his career. I think we can get there this summer and I expect him to have a, a, a big season this year. So. Hey, Jay, ain't no other agent in the world out here working out with that client like that, let alone maybe they go to the gym, do the cardio, but ain't no one get on the court hooping. Though, yeah, I'm going to guard him. I'm going to guard him. I'm going to get in his face. I'm going to talk some shit. All that. You know, and then I'm going to come home. I'm going to answer emails and, and try and make some money on the side for him. And then I'm going to go back and work out again. Right. Man, that's, man, that's fire. I mean, and just <laughs> talking about James, just real quick, because. First off, his creativity, he single-handedly has changed the game. I'm going to drop the bomb because yeah. people need to understand. Sidesteps so did look, not let me tell exist you about that. Let me tell you for a long time. Please that. tell me about the sidestep, please. Oh, uh, So we were, at AS, we were at Arizona State about probably 2019. I don't know when it started. I think it was 2019. It was either 19 or 18. And he was like, this dude is crazy smart, bro. Like, crazy. And I fight him on it, and I'm like, damn, he right. You know, so like, <laughs> we're at Arizona State, right? And he's like, yo, you think this is travel? He took a dribble and did a jump stop. I mean, he, did a, he took a dribble and then stepped back. I'm like, hell yeah, that's your travel. They're going to call it travel. It's, it's, it don't look clean, you know? And then he did, he did a jump stop. Think about that, right? So him dropping the ball and then stepping back, I called it travel. And then he did a jump stop. And I was like, oh, it's the same thing. It's just the jump stop is going forward. Yeah. And you drop and step it back. Oh, so it's he he countered you with it. He countered you with it when when you said it was a travel. He did a neg- another it, move and then you didn't say nothing. He was like, oh, okay, so then what's the deal? What, what, what about this thing? What's this thing? I'm like, oh, okay. They call him, we call him Jay Lawyer. You know, he's he's an arguer. <laughs> so like, I'm like, oh, you got a point there. And then after that, it was like, let's just work on that. So that's how he, that's where it came from. But, Arizona State. And I don't mean to cut you off. Like, we always talk about Steph Curry. But bro, the sidestep is used just as much as the three ball. And yeah. James really made that change that. And that's what's so crazy. And like, is that how it started? Like at the ASU that, joint? That's where it started at Arizona State. He was showing us a move. He dropped the ball and stepped back. And I was like, nah, I don't know about that. Then he did a jump stop. And I was like, okay, why are you showing me jump stop? He said, what's the difference? I'm like, I have to like do the move. Like I have to do the jump stop. And I was like, And then, okay. okay, yeah, I was like, okay, that's yeah, you you can get away with that. Okay, and then we we, we got to keep going. Then, uh, then we got to get to the 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 dancing, bro. He basically is like, there was one time in Houston, bro. Every time he would go out and work out, I would make sure I'm there at four p.m. I'm like, I I don't care if he the first one there. I'm in. I'm watching the workout, yeah. bro. This dude doing spin moves, side steps, moves I've never seen. He was like, yeah. like it was like he was dancing out there. I don't even know how to explain it, but I mean, I'm I like, how do like, you even think like, about how to how to even do that, bro? I just try to figure like, out where that came that from. That was progress. That was the progression from the jump. That was the progression from the st- from the step back. You know, after he got it down that first year, he's like, okay, now I'm about to get a little freaky with it, get a little saucy, do a little salsa dance, and he and he just danced with it. You know, like, and it just becomes a rhythm thing. It's just like Katie doing a spin move to a jump shot. You know, he just trying to find a rhythm that's gonna get him ready for the game. You know. And, you know, even like the one legged step backs, you know, stuff like that, just like finding ways to like be more creative. It's like, he's so crazy, like mentally, you know, he got to challenge himself like that to just be like happy, you know, excited. Like, let me just find something new to do. 
It's like he's he's so good that he gets bored with the basic. Basics, yeah. His it's crazy. Great, his his, his creative creativity is out this world. Yeah. He's making stuff yeah. up and he's just putting it to light yeah. and it's, mm-hmm. they're changing the game. It, I mean, it's, it's it's so much stuff, even from like getting fouled and you know, like even putting the ball out those years, like his hands are so strong and his shoulders are so strong. Like the dude is the dude is like a brick, you know, in most cases. And yeah, the people in NBA played against him to understand it. They like, yeah, James is tough, physical as hell. And he's gonna find a way to get a bucket because he's gonna use his brains and then he's gonna use his game, you know. But just his brains every year, you know, the last eight years, he's been adding things differently. Um, you know, the NBA has been doing a good job of, of um, I guess, changing the rules, adding rules and things to um, affect how he's scoring, I guess. Um, so if you got the NBA doing things to change, you know, some things that you that you introduced, then you're doing a good thing. But so. even the last introduction, and that's the rhythm dribble, that transformed to a triple threat to me, how he gets into his rhythm dribble. Like, you get what I'm saying? So like, where did that it. come it's, from? Yeah, like, where did that, You please tell me. Because, like, I feel like that that changed the triple threat in a way. Because now I see people use that as more of a read. It's essentially a triple threat to me. Like, the way he gets in his rhythm dribble and makes reach so shout, out of it. Shout out to my dog, Yo-Yo. Okay. Uh, Terrell. So, like, it's it's all a progression, right? So, it's like every year you're trying to get better. And, and uh, I think James, uh, he, you know, he trained his ass off, you know, in his early years in, his, uh, in the league. You know, okay, see, he spent a lot of time. Uh, working on his raps, you know, they call it raps. So twin cross, twin cross, twin cross, twin cross, twin cross. Oh, you know, awesome. he got really good at it, you know. So it's like, you know, his raps is so good. And I think he picked it up early in his career. I think the second year he started working on that. And the second and third and fourth year, I think he started working on that. And and he just kind of kept kept it in and just added it to his repertoire. You know, now his raps is step backs, you know, or he might rap, 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 you know, and hit you with a, a move and you know, he's downhill getting a layup, you know, so the raps is just a setup. The 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 brilliance of him and adding the step backs and stuff like that just made it a little more fun. So and then just the last basketball question. I'm sorry, bro. I learned so much with this basketball stuff. I know to do the voiceovers and stuff, but the reason why I feel like I learned so much is by learning from y'all, like hearing yeah. stuff like and you saying raps. Now I'm about to start saying rap. I ain't even gonna call it rhythm dribble no more. When he do, I'm gonna call it raps, but yeah. When he moved from OKC to Houston, I'll never forget that first game. People were like, oh my God. What was man, that situation man. like when y'all, I mean, as homie to man. homie, when he went from OKC to Houston and you saw the game, you were like, oh, it's over. Like, it's oh, he was like, yeah. Like, he was like, yeah. That's when he started. Like, so the first game, I think it was like this, by the fifth game, he's like, okay, I'm about to be an all star. <laughs> That's tough, bro. Because he was, I mean, I think he ran like 30. 28, 32, 40, like it was crazy. He was just going stupid. And the even crazier story, you know, shout out to Mike D'Antoni. Um, when he was in Houston, you know, he came back like, man, and this is just James being a student of the game and just understanding. And and, you know, people talk about him so much. And, you know, I've always I've always advocated that he's coachable. You know, he's the most coachable player in the NBA. You look at him, OKC, what did he do? Came off the bench, right? Could he be a, a starter? Yes. But you know what he did? He put his pride to the side, did what he needed to do for the team to win. He went to Houston. He, you know, they needed him to score the ball. He scored the ball. Mike D'Antoni came in, he said, I want you to run point guard. James came back home, he's like, man, he trying to make us run point guard. Hell nah. <laughs> like, just try it out. He's like, man, I am, I'm a shooting guard, bro. I'm a scorer. I'm about to be running point. This dude went to practice, came back home. He's like, bro, I'm about to average eight, nine assists, you know? And I'm like, and then he's, I was like, yeah, all right. And he went to practice the next day. The next day, he's like, yo, this shit about to work. <laughs> you know, so shout out, to, shout out to Mike D'Antoni. He put the ball in James' hand, and the rest is history. You know, and that's just being coachable. You know, he didn't even want to do it, you know. But, you know, the coach asked him to play that spot, and it started shaping the person and the player who, he's, who he is now, who he's become. And obviously, the game, the game kind of changed along the, along the, uh, the way, you know, and the three-point shot becoming more prevalent. And that just fits in right with Mike, Mike D'Antoni's system, you know. And uh, he took advantage of it, you know, and having great, great years at scoring. Um, and then James gets traded to, you know, to Brooklyn. And, you know, he took another role and the same thing in Philly. So just him being adaptable and uh, able to be coachable, like, it's something that no one looks at, you know. Um, and they just kind of like touch on like the things that don't matter, you know. 
they don't say he don't play defense, but he's top 10 in steals every year. You know, those people look at those stats. So it's like, you know, where are you, where are you, what are you looking at? You know, I, are you I, just I, looking at what people say, or is it, are you actually diving into this person who's very coachable, very team oriented? Like he's four, he's, he's 14, you know? And if you look at it from that perspective where James was like, okay, six man, he took a, took a role. Okay. You know, he, uh, okay. See, so didn't pay him. Houston did. So he went there, you know, did a couple of years. Mike D'Antoni comes in, wants to run point guard. He's like, nah. Then he's like, okay, this is going to work. It worked. You know, he gets to Brooklyn. You know, he's like, be the facilitator here, you know, get these guys involved. It, you know, it worked. You know, a couple games, they're just games away. You know, one one game away, both teams. So it's like, go to go here to Philly, you know, run this offense. Doc wants him to do this, be this player. And, you know, he does that, you know. And my me, I'm like, no. <laughs> Selfishly. Yeah. Oh, go be James Harden. You know, go be go be that dog. Don't lose that fire, you know. And um, you know, he's always been a coachable person. So that's just who he is as a person. He's always gonna play the win and play the right way. So man, that's fire. Yeah, like you said, uh the the best that we've seen are adaptable. I mean, I see it with LeBron all season, just him yeah. being able to adapt. The greats adapt and uh the greats that's adapt. Been, yep. That's what they do. Just a few more questions, Ray. What you got? You got something? No, I just want to say, man, I hope, hopefully y'all got a documentary going, man, because y'all I pray y'all do. I pray y'all do. We got got so much content, man. We going to put it out. Yeah, got to, because y'all's story is, because like Jay and I mean, people know like that's y'all, y'all is super close, whatever, but you don't know the, you know, since y'all was kids and then how your path, his path, everybody, the whole gang, like, yeah, this is, this is tough for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And even, his, even, his la- even his last season, it was a tough season for him, you know, just on the court, off the court, a lot of stuff going on. Um, but he doesn't let anybody, you know, see any of that stuff or, you know, but this is going to be a big summer for us, man. We're just trying to make sure he's in his best shape as he can be. And, and uh, you know, obviously him getting traded out of his hands. Um, it's, it's nothing he can really do. You know, it's on us, um, Mike and uh, Brandon and I, just to, Make sure working with the organizations to make sure we get this this done uh, on a timely matter. And at the end of the day, he just needs to make sure he's ready to play. Um, and until then, you know, we're just gonna just wait. You know, so. Oh, I like it. Now, nah, and you know, even just before I let you go, I think one thing that even off of Ray just saying it, it kind of just brought it to my head. Like you, Zoe, like the whole group. When I started thinking about it, all you guys are making an impact, and like. It's only a couple people's circles that are doing that, you know, and I see that like you, Zo, like, and I probably sure there's more that I'm not I'm not mentioning, but mm-hmm. y'all circle and I, I see y'all go into spots and how people embrace y'all and every player like pretty much rocks with y'all. Like mm-hmm. it's rare. It's not it's not really common. I, it's, I'm just gonna We should love, man. Like I think the one thing that like we all solid, you know. We always gonna be accountable, available. We never gonna be like big time anything. And it's it's just even like John Moran situation. Like I I'm reaching out to John, like, yo, let me help that kid, man. Like I want to, like if he needs somebody to talk to, let me talk to him. Let me help him. You know? Yeah. So like there's guys in the league now that I work with in the past and and I've always oh had an open door policy. Like, call me if you need something. Always. So like, and that's just how we are. Like myself, Zoe, like Junie, like the, my my guys, Greg, like we've always been like that, you know. So it's always been open door policy and, uh, you know, Zoe's doing some great stuff, you know, working, you know, a lot with Travis right now at the time, but, you know, and he got some stuff that he's working on. So I'm, you know, excited. I can't share it, but, you know, he'll share it uh, eventually, but, you know, he's, he's figuring it out. We're both figuring it out and, and just, you know, growing together. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're killing it. Um, Where do you see, you know, with you, I'll give you these last two for me is just, where do you see equity basketball going with, with Troy Payne, where you see Troy Payne going with this equity basketball? Because I know a lot of people are, are trying to figure that out. Like, what's Troy's next move? Where do you see Troy doing with equity basketball? Man, we just want to get some great talent, man, represent some great talent. You know, we're a boutique agency. You know, I believe in, in having 100 guys, but I don't. You know, I want to make sure I can touch each person. Mm-hmm. So if we only had 10 guys or 15 guys, I'd be happy with that. Um, you know, Troy Payne's growth, you know, as it comes and opportunities come, you know, I can't say what that is, you know, if it's a GM bro, you know, and if it came my way and if, you know, some years to come, then yeah, if the the opportunity makes sense, then I'll take it. But I can't say what's going to happen right now, man. I don't know. I take it one day at a time, man, one lesson at a time. And, uh, and I just appreciate it for every, every opportunity I get. 
Yep. And then last up for me is what players do you guys have from equity basketball that you feel like, you know, are on the rise and some guys that we should look out for in terms of that for just the people that don't know? Uh, I think Ryan Rollins, get a, he has a great opportunity Ooh, this year. We like him. Wizards. You see, I asked JP. I asked yeah. JP about him. He got game. Yeah. So, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. He's um, he didn't really get opportunity last year. He had a, he had a little uh, surgery, minor surgery setback. Um, and then at the same time, he's played in Golden State, you know, in this, this Hall of Fame talent, all, you know, on that court for the next few years. So mm. there wasn't a lot of time for him, even with them signing uh, Jordan. Um, or Jordan got traded now, but, you know, even with Jordan there as a backup, you know, it just wasn't a lot of time for, for Ryan. So I'm happy that he's in Washington now. Uh, you know, it's a great coach down there, and he's going to have a great opportunity. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. And then, you know, obviously Antoine and, and Miles. I think Miles got a good opportunity in Atlanta. Um, playing alongside Trey. So I'm going to see Trey this weekend. I'm going to make sure he's talking to my guy and make sure he's giving the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> with, with Antoine, how has it been for you just even learning, like, you had a, a player that did a lot, you know, when he went to Detroit Mercy, um, should have broke, you know, P Pistol Pete's record. But, yeah. you know, came in, and I, I, I think what's really dope about him is just seeing that, you know, he knows, even with Portland, that, you know, shooting the basketball is very key. Like, when went into workouts, was, you know, knocking down a lot of shots, showcasing that he could shoot the three ball off the catch and shoot. Because I know majority of people were concerned that, oh, he's too much off the bounce. Like, he can't nah. just play yeah. off the ball, you know. And how has that been for you seeing that in your first year with, you know, the agency? Nah, he's – so what I heard from from uh, Portland, they said he was probably – he shot the ball the second best or top two. Yeah. Out of all the workers that they had, so they really they're really high on him. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing that we've been kind of pushing him to do a little more is just show his passing ability. Mm, okay, he's an underrated passer. Um, you know, he obviously draws a lot of attention with his shooting. Um, he can make a shot from anywhere on the court. You know, even backwards if he has to shoot it. Yeah, facts. Uh, he can, the kid can straight out <laughs> score the ball, and um, I'm happy we got him. You know, I think he's going to be a great asset to the NBA. Um, you know, his opportunity is coming and, uh, you know, he's confident. He's just staying locked in and, and, uh, his dad's done a great job of coaching him, um, and keeping him ready for the moment. So I look forward to seeing what he, what he's going to, you know, give to this organization, um, you know, this season. So, yeah, right. You Detroit Mercy, Mercy legend. So don't just sit there and not say nothing, bro. You missed nah, the Detroit Andy Mercy Andy himself. And he played for his dad too. And he played for his dad Just like too. you. You followed the, the whole recipe, right? Yeah. He's well groomed. He's in good hands now. Troy's got him. He's gonna have a good career. That kid can shoot the ball, and he's he works so hard. I'm like, yo, chill, just go go to sleep. <laughs> I heard he's he, he, like he want to live in the gym. Like even I think before his summer league games, you know, they two hours before the gym, he's like, yo, set the gym up. You know, I'm like, you, I'm saying you gotta be there. He's like, I gotta be there in an hour. I'm like, what you gonna do? Shoot for 20 minutes? He's like, yeah, I got like I got about 20 minutes. The dude is going to the gym 20 minutes before a summer league game <laughs> every game. Setting him up. You know, and even if he isn't know, playing, man. and even if he isn't playing or only playing five minutes, he's like, yo, I got to get my shots up. So the kid works hard, man. Like when I first saw him in the gym in Vegas, like he was getting out there. I think he had the hardest work. And I was there about a couple of days, three or four days. And, you know, he was always the first one in, always the last one leaving. And he didn't just stay like for a few minutes. He was there for like another hour, you know, just getting him up, him and his brother. So, you know, the kid works hard. Yeah, uh, You know, a lot of, a lot of our success and stuff like that. And, it just comes from hard work, you know, and he's has that built in them. Um, so I see a lot of uh, big things in the future for him. Go yeah. your son, man. Nah, but got, got a lot of pressure, man. You know, nah, that's how I keep going. I feel like it's pressure on me and my neighbor, people from my neighborhood. I got kids that look up to me and stuff. I, I can't let nobody down. Man, nah, this dope interview, bro. Nah, I, I appreciate I, we, it. Because you the first agent. We never had an agent on here. Yeah. Nah, I, 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 I appreciate you because I'm, I'm going to be real. We up, it's 12, 17. I had that dial up internet earlier and Troy Aruin, like he let, he let us do, redo this interview and he just dropped some real gems to people. Hopefully, you know, y'all listen to this full interview. Y'all have to, especially if y'all want to get into this sports world, he dropped some real gems and, you know, especially for all the basketball players out there that playing that want to mm -hmm. transfer over. It's essential for y'all to listen and build a network. And, you know, like he said, that two years, when you in that final couple of years, start making start that plan. plan. You got to, bro. You don't want to nah, come nah, out here plan, nothing. Man. Yeah, no plan, no nothing. You want to ask something. The money is going to start just, 
you just gonna start being a a, de- a debit. Just charge, 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 man. And and you gotta you gotta start, you know, plant those seeds, man. Plant the seeds early. It's real, you know. It's a lot of opportunity out here. And and another thing that I didn't even get to touch on was just from a perspective of like careers, right? Mm. Like you play ball, right? But but you building a career in social media and advertising and podcasts. Mm-hmm. There's so many different things that we can do as um as entrepreneurs or hustlers or mm-hmm. you know businessmen marketing people like I work in sports marketing and I work as an agent now but there's uh, there's other careers that you can have you know I just flew a, a hair braider I you know I just flew a hair braider out to Arizona to braid James hair you know they paying her fifteen dollars for a day you know the barber same thing so it's like you can have a tattoo artist you can be a DJ you can be security car service like there's always careers inside the NBA without being there. You know, so like, just, 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 just think a little deeper when you start looking into careers after you're done playing and just, you know, double down on it. Cause there's opportunities everywhere. Jewelers. I mean, I can keep going. Stylists, you know, concierge. Fuck. Like everything, you know, rich souls and jerseys to, to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like, there's so many different things you can do to get into this space, whether it's, it's in the NBA or MFL or any kind of professional, professional leagues, like, just, just, just be optimistic. Don't, don't think, you know, think big and and nothing, there's nothing that's out of reach. You know, you could be the cameraman doing the videos, you know, it's like, right, right. there's so many different jobs within the NBA that you can just tap into. Um, that doesn't require you to actually play. Facts. And people are like that. You could be a barber, haircut, DJ. I'm like, come on, man. Facts. Nah. Perfect. Nah. I, I, and I'll just leave with that. Cause like, honestly with Swish, I never in my life thought I was going to be a damn cameraman. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. Only reason why I did that is because I I, I asked some of the homies before, like, yo, this is a vision with Swish. Like, y'all want to do it? And then next thing you know, they were nowhere to be found. So I was like, I guess I'm going to have to pick up that camera and do it myself. Yeah, but you but you hustling, man. You grinding. You got nothing. You you, you know, you you can sell. You you can monetize the hell out of it. Yeah, exactly. Which products and. You know, you can have your own headsets if you want. You know, it's just whatever you want. You can desire, you know, whatever your desires are, you can go after it, you know. And, exactly. And the relationships that you get off the court, you know, you can start finding people to put money. It's just, it's a lot of plays, man. Yep. Nah, and I appreciate you, Ray, you know, TP, TP, T Pizzle, as I should say, we got your name at the bottom too. You know, your <laughs> IG name, but nah, it just, it's just dope seeing your grind. And seeing someone like us doing it, bro. I mean, it's I not too many I appreciate y'all for us. having me. I appreciate, I appreciate you, dog. Right James, call me right now. I mean, I got to answer this real quick. All right, my dog. All right, y'all. I'll uh-huh. get up with you. Appreciate you. All 